Nitrogen is another element that has biogeochemical cycles. So just like carbon dioxide is in our atmosphere, so is nitrogen. And it is in the form of a gas, which is N2. And it is actually the most abundant element in our atmosphere. It actually makes seven up 78% of the atmosphere, of the gases in the atmosphere. So we are breathing in nitrogen gas all the time, but we cannot take it up into our bodies. So we have to get nitrogen from another met from another way, right? So when we talk about um, nitrogen fixation, this is the ability of some microbes to remove nitrogen from the atmosphere. So this can be written as this formula. So this is ammonia. So some organisms, microbes in the soil, for example, or um, some bacteria, cyanobacteria in the ocean are nitrogen fixers. So they can take up the nitrogen and actually put it into a form that can be used by plants. Now, the forms of nitrogen are, there's actually a variety of forms. We have ammonium, we have ammonia, we have nitrite and nitrate. So these are different forms of nitrogen. And it's really important because that is how plants get their nitrogen through inorganic forms. And they take it up from the soil. So they are able to um, absorb those, uh, that nitrogen from the soil. So if we look at um, the types of plants that are capable of doing this, we can talk about um, legumes. So actually, let me go to a, a different page here. So legumes, these are like peas, lentils, they would also be like um, beans and then like peanuts are also examples of legumes. So they have symbiotic bacteria that live in their root nodules. What this means is, is that like, if you were to take a pea plant and lift it out of the soil, you should see on the roots, these little round nodule structures. And these are places where bacteria reside. And it is the bacteria that are able to capture nitrogen from the atmosphere around the root system. So we need some aeration of the soil, that there needs to be air down there, atmosphere. And then the bacteria take that nitrogen out of that air and then incorporate it into a form that can be take, taken directly up by the plant. So you don't need to add extra nitrogen to your soil when you are planting legumes um, if you have these symbiotic bacteria. So sometimes like if you can't plant your peas, they recommend that you get the mycorrhizal bacteria that, um, and you plant them or you, you roll the seeds in this, these bacteria before you actually plant them or you add them to the soil. Sometimes farmers use this as a method of getting nitrogen into the soil. So they might plant a cover crop of a legume and then they, then they might plow it under and allow de decomposition to occur and then plant another crop that is not a nitrogen fixing crop on top of that. And that actually um, uh, makes it so they don't have to add so much synthetic nitrogen to the soils. So let's look at some ways that we also get nitrogen from the atmosphere. Besides this nitrogen fixation, which is what is shown right here, we have lightning. So weirdly, lightning 
is a source of getting nitrous oxides that can then fall into or onto the earth. So lightning strikes also, small part of it, but also are able to fix nitrogen. That is an interesting, that is a source of energy, right? Creating a non-spontaneous process of conversion of, um, of uh, uh, nitrogen gas to nitric oxides. We also have um, the ability of bacteria to release nitrogen from the soil back into the atmosphere. So that would be a process of decomposition, which is called denitrification. So that is the opposite of nitrogen fixation. So denitrification is the opposite. We also see that we have the ability now, since the early 1900s, to actually fix nitrogen. So this is a mechanism that is referred to as the Haber-Bosch process. And so let's talk about that Haber-Bosch process. So in the early 1900s, like 1918, I think it was, chemists came up with this ability to use the burning, the energy that is uh, burned off from the burning of natural gas and using that energy to synthetically, to create synthetic forms of nitrogen. So this is um, a chemical process. that uses fossil fuel energy to produce synthetic nitrogen. And it is used primarily as fertilizer. During World War I, it was, uh, hugely important because it also um, allowed them to produce nitrogen that could be used in ammunitions and also in bombs. So you might know that nitrogen fertilizer can be used to create bombs, right? Some terrorists have done that in the past, like in the Oklahoma City bombing, they use that nitrogen fertilizer to do that. So um, this is super important because this actually increased the productivity of our crop plants. So we have an increase in crop yield associated with synthetic use of the use of synthetic fertilizers. So now we have um, increased the amount of plants and other, and then also tropically above that, right? So we can now, um, uh, support a larger human population by increasing the crop yield due to um, the synthetic fertilizer. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the, um, the um, agricultural section um, of this class. So let's look at this in a, in a little bit more detail. So here we have Haber-Bosch fixation. Okay, it's almost up there with natural biological fixation in terms of the amounts. Um, these fertilizers can then get into um, the soils. And then one of the problems is, is that they can then get into the water. So you'll notice that here from the uh, sewage, it can go into the water, but also here, hmm, from fertilizers, it should, there should be runoff and erosion into water. So one of the major ways we have disrupted this bio biological geochemical cycle, biogeochemical cycle, is through producing excess nitrogen. This nitrogen leaches off and gets into the oceans, and then it can lead to algae blooms, right? And that is a, a problem. So if we look at um, problems associated with humans and the nitrogen cycle. Um, we have um, nitrogen fertilizer, um, synthetic fertilizer. Hmm. 
this can tends to leach, leach from the soil. And it can enter the water. Now, if you live someplace where you have a, um, a well, for example, you might know that you need to be able to get, um, you need to be able to test your water to make sure that it doesn't have excess nitrogen in it. So I think this is a leech. No, that doesn't look right, leech. Anyway, I can't remember how to spell leech in this particular instance, but it gets into the soil and enters the water. Okay, so you know that nitrogen um, in your, um, in your well water is bad. And specifically, it's really bad for children because excessive nitrogens can lead to developmental problems. So that's an important thing to note. We also have um, the problem of sewage runoff. Why does sewage runoff have nitrogen in it? That is because we have nitrogen in our urine. So um, the way that we get rid of excess nitrogen in our body is by urinating it out. If we retain nitrogen or urea in our body, it is toxic to us. If our kidneys stop working, we die, right? So we have to get rid of that nitrogen. And so sewage is also going to have a problem or is gonna be a problem if it gets like raw sewage, if it gets into the water. So this sometimes, both of these factors sometimes cause what is called eutrophication. This, typic, this actually means good feeding, but what this means is, is that you're gonna have excessive, generally excessive growth death and decay of algae. So algae themselves produce oxygen, but when they die and they decompose because of this bloom, this algae bloom, then the decomposers, the microbes that break it down, use up all of the oxygen. And so this creates what is called an anoxic zone. in the water. So this is without oxygen. So A means without, they put an N in there because it would be awkward without it. And anoxic means without oxygen. So you have oxygen being depleted from the water. So we do have places where um, we have uh, these zones um, that are dead, dead zones. And a good example of this is in the Gulf of Mexico. So water running off from the middle of our, of our country, of our continent, Mississippi River and all its tributaries come down and then they empty into the Gulf of Mexico. And right where they empty into the Gulf of Mexico is a dead zone. And that is because of this excessive sewage and synthetic fertilizer that gets into the water and it causes eutrophication and it causes anoxia, which kills fish. And so there's really no place, there's no live living things in that particular dead zone. So um, making sure that these things don't run off into our waterways is super important for the overall, overall health of our planet.